Hey guys, it's Sunday, May 18th, about lunchtime. Uh, I just wanted to do a quick update on the progress that I got done on this gasifier. I'm going to try to show as much as I can here, and I think I have everything prepared. I don't have this welded all the way around yet, it's kind of just tacked in place, but I'm going to try to open this up, give you a view on the inside. Now, I haven't done the modification to the uh, the extension on the bottom of this you can see the ash grate I am going to be making a new longer inverted bell type reduction zone on this and then lengthening the chains but I haven't got that far yet I've been working on other stuff I'm going to try to show you the inside of this but I don't know how much you're going to be able to see because I can't see what the camera's showing but you can kind of see the uh, the studs that stick through the top of this vessel, they're welded on the inside so nothing can leak out of them. And you can also see the ignition port, I hope. But these are the studs that I was talking about. So I drilled and tapped the bottom flange and uh, put the studs through and then welded them from the inside, which I probably should have done before I put the ring on, so I had to crawl inside the tank to weld it, but it's done, it's all that matters. So I TIG welded around the outside of these, so the hopper is attached to this vessel, or to this flange, and then that flange sits on top of the lower flange, which is sealed, welded all the way around with the studs welded shut. Um, so that's that, and then I started doing my condensate lid. Now you'll notice on this that there is pieces of pipe. It's kind of bright out here. I don't know how much you're going to see. There's pieces of pipe sticking through here that are actually welded to the upper part of the ring, the upper ring. Okay, and there's one on the front and there's one on the back. You can see it's sticking down on this side. Now again I have, this time I, I welded those studs before I welded the blue lid on the top there. I welded those studs all the way around so when they're sticking through they're absolutely 100% sealed. And I am going to pressure test everything. Um, <clears throat> there is uh, a how-to video on how to make these gaskets. Um, uh, DOCDCOX is the YouTube username. He has a video, High Temperature Gaskets. Um, I have the material over here. I haven't got to make them up yet. but. Uh, this is all the stuff that he shows you to use. So I'm going to be making a gasket between the hopper and the vessel out of that material. And I'm also going to be making a gasket between those two flanges at the top. Now that lower flange is actually only has like a 10 and 5 8 inside diameter and there's a lip around it so that the water can't just dump back into the hopper it has to go, I mean it would have to fill up a half inch tall or three quarters of an inch tall to overflow into the vessel. It would have to go out these pipes and I'm going to actually put either I might connect them together and put like unions on them so it's easily removable so I can remove this lid. Um, I'm not exactly sure how I'm going to do that yet. But uh, one thing that I am going to do is on the top of this I am going to be cutting a hole and I have what was left of the bottom of the hopper before I cut it off. I know the radius isn't going to match exactly, but I'm going to try to make a lid for the top of this. And hopefully I'll get it close enough that I'll get a good seal on it when I spring load it shut. But um, you could see I, I have had this hopper lifted out of here with this crane and this sliding assembly really does work well. Um, over here and I'm going to show you what that looks like too because I kind of beefed it up a little bit. Uh, you can see, I mean, it doesn't take much to slide this thing. It rolls really nice. Now, I have lifted this thing out of here and in my garage this crane goes so high that it hits my ceiling. So I wasn't able to take it all the way up but it does go high enough to lift this hopper out and I could slide it right over the edge and lower it down. 
I'll push it all the way forward and I'll give you a kind of shot of how far it sticks out from down here. Now I just have this thing clamped in place right now because originally I had the end of the frame here was sticking out and I didn't want to bolt it in place because it would have stopped this hopper from coming out the top so I ended up moving it back. So before I attached it for, for good, I wanted to make sure I had the clearances I need. But um, here, I'll give you a shot of this. You can see there's plenty of room that that'll lower down so I could work on it or change parts on it or whatever, you know. So, um, so I'm in the process of getting ready to make these gaskets here. But I also have this stuff, I think I showed this in the last video. This is the stuff, this rope gasket material, that's going to go to bolt the hearth on. Now this, this uh, high temperature silicone is actually rated higher than this Permatex stuff. I think this Permatex is for like 200 degrees and I think this is for like 500 degrees or something like that. So I'm going to try to use this stuff with the rope gasket. Um, but just in case you guys were wondering, like a lot of this welding I did is mostly TIG welded. Um, some of this, this is the this is the funnel that's going to go down inside the hopper, and I only have that bar temporarily tacked in place right now because uh, it's easier to lift it in and out of there with. Eventually, when I'm done, I'm actually going to have my um, my air intake piping attached to this, so there'll be a union inside this hopper that I can. Uh, grab a hold of, like I could take the union apart, take the top parts out of it, and then lift the whole pipe, and that whole funnel will come out with the pipe from the inside of this. I've had it in there before, it fits really nice. I'm pretty happy about the way it came out. I still have to weld this. I can only get so much done on a small tank of gas. Speaking of gas, um, I don't know how much you guys get into the welding thing. I'm more of a welder by trade than anything, but I figured I'd come in here and give you kind of a quick preview as to what I'm using here. This is a Chicago Electric Harbor Freight TIG welder. It's a 240 volt welder. Um, I bought it a couple years ago. I beat the snot out of it. I built a, a four-wheel stainless bike with it. I built a stainless steel gas tank for my motorcycle with it. And I'm building this project with it. It puts out, I want to say, 160 some amps. <clears throat> it's good for stick welding and TIG welding. It has a high frequency start, uh, which means you don't have to physically touch the tungsten down to start the arc to weld with it. And there's a trigger, and what I like about this trigger and this gun is it's actually the same stuff that Miller uses. All the same parts that you could buy for Miller machines, you know, are interchangeable with this. So the collets and the collet bodies and even this short back on here is nice to be able to put on. Um, so I run, a lot of the welding I do on the steel, I run a straight argon. Here's the argon bottle that I use. Um, and then I also have a smaller bottle. This one is, can't really see. It's argon carbon dioxide. That's for my MIG welding. So I have a small 110 MIG. This is what I use for MIG welding. So anything I MIG weld, I use that. Anything I TIG weld, I use that. But uh, I just figured I'd give you a quick preview as to the, the equipment that I'm using to actually do some of this stuff. You know, I think it's turning out okay. I'm I'm pretty happy with it. Um, but I wanted to take the time to do a quick video here and let you see some of the progress. So I'll kind of back up a little bit and give you a full shot here. Now one thing I know I have to do is uh, between the legs across from here across to here I definitely have to support this if you ever read any of the uh, the reviews on the scaffolding that's one of the things they complain about the most is how shaky it is you know and I am hanging a lot of weight on this the wheels are awesome though they do actually lock like they don't swivel or move when you lock them so I will say that the wheels are really nice but I definitely need to reinforce the legs on this 
And after I do that, it's going to give me a nice platform to mount the rest of my stuff. So I have some plans for, uh, you know, the pipes coming in and out of this thing. I am going to oversize the crap out of everything that I put in here. I can always reduce it down, you know, so when I go in with my air intake and I think I'm even going to use um, a preheated air intake from the exhaust port on this. I'm going to come up with something that's going to be pretty neat. Um, so I'm kind of looking forward to see how that turns out too. But for right now, I'm trying to get this done. I still have to cut the, the ignition port through the front of this vessel here. It's going to be right in this area here. Um, the only reason I haven't done that so far is because I want to get these gaskets mounted in place and put the, you know, the tension on the bolts and put it where it belongs before I transfer my mark through to the sidewall. Then I'll take it apart and drill my holes and extend that pipe through the wall there and try to get that done. But uh, thanks for watching and I hope you guys like it so far.